Ira Jersey, head of U.S. interest rate strategy at RBC Capital Markets, says the Fed would like to raise rates but won't for fear of causing a double-dip recession. He joins us now from his office in New York City. Ira, always glad to have you on with us. So, I mean, what did you make of Bernanke's comments yesterday? Rates on hold until the Fed is ready to act. Do you think we'll see something sooner or later? Well, we, we, our forecast right now is for the end of 2010 to see the first hike. But in order for that to happen, you really have to have a sustainable recovery. So we're, we're forecasting about 2.5% recovery next year, um, but also a falling job market and inflation expectations not, uh, uh, not going down significantly. So, um, so, so you kind of have to have this perfect storm in order for 2010 to have a, uh, a rate hike. But, but we think that there probably will be. Uh, as you mentioned, Deirdre, our, our forecast is that um, uh, that the Fed will start to raise rates and would like to get away from the zero interest rate policy, but really they have to see an economy that's not going to be in a double dip if they do so. Uh, Ira, surely everybody in the market is weighing the same factors in that calculus as you are. Why is it then that uh, Fed funds futures jumped out to suggest that we're going to see a rate hike by August? Yeah, you know, it's interesting that the market continues to, to ebb and flow kind of between August and, and uh, November, uh, even December rate hikes next year. Um, but, but it had been as early as June, uh, recall, not so long ago. And, and I think it's going to continue to be pushed out, but not necessarily in a straight line where uh, the market comes to realize that an extended period is, is a minimum of six months. But realistically, um, it's six months after they remove that language that the Federal Reserve is likely to, uh, likely to start hiking. You know, we don't think that they'll, we, we think that they'll, they'll tweak the language a little bit in January, but they're not going to remove that, that all important extended period phrase probably till the middle of next year. All right. I know this is not exactly uh, fair to put you on the spot like this, but do you think the Fed wants to raise rates right now, but it just can't because unemployment is above 10 percent? Well, I don't think that they want to today. Uh, I think there are some members who question whether or not they should. Given the expansion of the balance sheet, you have some members uh, who, who hold on to their old monetarist thinking, which, uh, which we don't subscribe to. But if they, if they do um, raise rates today and wanted to really raise rates today, then the chances of a double dip would go up astronomically, and uh, you'd have a significant slowdown in the economy. One part of getting out of this recession is ensuring that both the household sector, the financial sector, and at some level, the non-financial sector, the industrial sector, continues to reduce debt. And in order to do that, you really need uh, interest rates to remain reasonably low uh, so they can firstly refinance that debt at, at lower costs, but secondly, that they have, have enough money and enough time in order to pay down a lot of their debt. This is all goes into that balance sheet adjustment we talk about. When we talk about weak balance sheets, we're really talking about too much debt on those balance sheets. Ira, from a timing standpoint, how much time can the Federal Reserve buy itself uh, in advance of an interest rate hike by unwinding some of the monetary stimulus and ending quantitative easing? Well, see, that, I think that's something that, that a lot of people miss in their, um, you know, in their analysis of this. You know, when you have quantitative easing, you have, you know, basically extraordinary circumstances where, you know, the Federal Reserve has, has more than doubled its balance sheet over the course of the last 18 months. And we think that they'll be just as aggressive unwinding that balance sheet and re uh, effectively reducing that accommodation without actually hiking. Uh, so that'll be the primary tool that we think that they'll actually start to use come the second quarter of next year by stopping their purchase of uh, mortgage-backed securities and agency debt in, uh, in March of next year, they'll just let it roll off. $250 billion, so well over 10% of their portfolio, will vanish um, by the end of 2010 just by prepayments of mortgages maturities of, and maturities of both Treasury and agency debt. So, so they can reduce a lot of the accommodation that they've added without doing anything. Ira, thanks so much. Ira Deirdre, Jersey, Eric, thanks. head of U.S. interest rate strategy at RBC Capital Markets.